Hello, Storytime friends. How are you this week? You doing pretty good? We are too. This week at the library, we're celebrating something really cool. Does anybody know what this week is? Well, there's two things happening. It's Read Across America Week, which we celebrate because this week was Dr. Seuss's birthday. Do you know who Dr. Seuss is? He was an author. Do you know what an author is? Some of you do. An author is someone who writes stories. That's pretty cool. So Dr. Seuss wrote a lot of stories for kids. And that's why we celebrate his birthday because he did an amazing job entertaining kids and families and teaching reading, helping to teach reading with his stories. So our first story today is one of my favorites. It's by Dr. Seuss. It's Horton, here's a who. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton the elephant, elephant heard a small noise. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked toward the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again. Just a very faint yelp as if someone, some tiny person were calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton, but who are you? Where? He looked and he looked. He could see nothing there. Can you guys see that? I'm getting a reflection. Let's see. Hang on, give me one second, guys. There, now I can see what you see. Okay. But a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. Do you see that small speck? Can you guys see that? It's so tiny. Okay. I say, murmured Horton, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? Why, I think that there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust, some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. Some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow in the pool. He has no way to steer. I'll just have to save him because after all, a person's a person, no matter how small. So gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched his great trunk through the air and he lifted the dust speck, speck and carried it over and placed it down safe on a very soft clover. Hmph, humped a voice. Twas a sour kangaroo. And a young kangaroo in her pouch said, hmm, too. Why, that speck is as small as the head of a pin. A person on that? Why, there never has been. Believe me, said Horton, I tell you sincerely, my ears are quite keen and I heard him quite clearly. I know there's a person down there and what's more, quite likely there's two, even three, even four, quite likely a family for all that we know, a family with children just starting to grow. So please, Horton said, as a favor to me, try not to disturb them. Just please let them be. I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. You're the biggest blame fool in the jungle of Newell. And the kangaroos plunged in the cool of the pool. What a terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my very small persons get drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So he plucked up the clover, clover and hustled away. Through the high jungle treetops, 
The news quickly spread. He talks to a dust speck. He's out of his head. Just look at him walk with that speck on that flower. And Horton walked worrying almost an hour. Should I put this speck down? Horton thought with alarm. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I can't put it down and I won't. After all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint, he could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, said Horton. He put his ear near it. My friend, came the voice. You're a very fine friend. You've helped all us folks on this dust speck no end. You've saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors. You've saved all our clutches and grocery stores. You mean... Horton gasped. You have buildings there too? Oh yes, piped the voice. We most certainly do. I know, called the voice. I'm too small to be seen, but I'm mayor of a town that's friendly and clean. Our buildings to you would seem terribly small, but to us who aren't big, they are wonderfully tall. My town is called Whoville, for I am a who. And we who's are all thankful and grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town. You're safe now. Don't worry. I won't let you down. But as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, three big jungle monkeys climbed up Horton's neck. The Wickersham brothers came shouting, What rot! This elephant's talking to who's who are not. There aren't any who's and they don't have a mayor. And we're going to stop all this nonsense. So there. They snatched Horton's clover. They carried it off to a black bottom eagle named Vlad Vladikov, a mighty strong eagle of very swift wit. And they said, will you kindly get rid of this thing? And before the poor elephant could speak, the eagle flew off with a flower in its beak. All that late afternoon and far into the night, that black bottom bird flapped his wings if in fast flight, while Horton chased after with groans over stones that tattered his toenails and battered his bones and begged, please don't harm all my little folks who have as much right to live as bigger folks do. But far, far beyond him, that eagle kept flapping and over his shoulder called back, quit your yapping. I'll fly the night through. I'm a bird. I don't mind. And I'll hide this tomorrow where you'll never find it. And at 6.56 the next morning, he did. It was sure, it sure was a terrible place that he hid it. He let the small clover drop somewhere inside of a great patch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Find that, sneered the bird, but I think you will fail. And he left with a flip of his black bottom tail. I'll find it, cried Horton, I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on my small speck of dust. And the clover by clover by clover with care, he picked up and stretched them and called, are you there? But clover by clover by clover he found that the one that he sought for was just not around. And by noon, poor old Horton, more dead than alive, had picked, searched, and piled up 9,005. Then on through the afternoon, hour after hour, till he found them at last on the three millionth flower. My friends, cried the elephant, tell me, do tell. Are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? From down on the speck, the voice of the mayor. We've really had trouble, much more than our share. When that black bottom birdie let go and we dropped, we landed so hard that our clocks have all stopped. Our teapots are broken, our rocking chairs smashed. Our bicycle tires all blew up when we crashed. So, Horton, please, pleaded the voice of the mayor, will you stick by us who's while we're making repairs? Of course, Horton answered, of course I will stick. I'll stick by you small folks through thin and through thick. With help of the Wickersham brothers and dozens of Wickersham uncles and Wickersham cousins, the Wickersham in-laws, 
whose help I've engaged, you're going to be roped and you're going to be caged. Did we skip? We skipped a page. Oops. Huh. Let's go back. Whoops. So he's going to stick through thick and through thin. And then, hmm, hmm, pumped a voice. For almost two days, you've run wild and insisted on chatting with persons who've never existed. Such carryings on in our peaceable jungle. We've had quite enough of your bellowing bungle. And I'm here to state, snapped the big kangaroo, that your silly, nonsensical game is through. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. With the help of the Wickersham brothers and dozens of Wickersham uncles and Wickersham cousins and Wickersham in-laws, whose help I've engaged, you're going to be roped and you're going to be caged. And as for your despect, ha, that we shall boil in hot steaming kettle of bezel nut oil. Boil it, gasped Horton. Oh, that you can't do. It's all full of persons. They'll prove it to you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Horton called. Mr. Mayor, you've got to prove now that you really are there. So call a big meeting. Get everyone out. Make every who holler. Make every who shout. Make every who scream. If you don't, every who is going to end up in a bezel nut stew. Bezel nut stew. And down on the dust back, the scared little mayor quick called a meeting in Whoville Town Square. And as people cried loudly, they cried out in fear, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. The elephant smiled. That was clear as a bell. The kangaroo surely heard that very well. All I heard, snapped the kangaroo, was the breeze and the faint sound of wind through the far distant trees. I heard no small voices and you didn't either. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me neither. Grab him, they shouted. A cage and cage the big dope. Lasso his stomach with 10 miles of rope. Tie the knots tight so he'll never shake loose. Then dunk that dumb speck in the bezel nut juice. Horton fought back with great vigor and vim, but the wicker sham gang was too many for him. They beat him, they mauled him, they started to haul him into his cage, but he managed to call to the mayor. Don't give up, I believe in you all. A person's a person no matter how small. And you very small persons will not have to die if you make yourselves hurt, so come on now and try. The mayor grabbed a tom-tom, he started to smack it, and all over whom, Whoville, they whooped up a racket. They rattled tin kettles, they beat on brass pans, on garbage pail tops and old cranberry cans. They blew on bazookas and blasted great toots, on clarinets, oompas, and boompas, and flutes. Great guns of gusts of loud racket rang through the air. They rattled and shook the whole sky, and the mayor called up through the howling mid-hullabaloo. Hey, Horton, how's this? Is our sound coming through? And Horton called back, I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears aren't as strong quite as mine. They don't hear a thing. Are you sure all your boys are doing their best? Are they all making noise? Are you sure every who down in Whoville is working? Quick, look through your town. Is there anyone shirking? Through the town rushed the mayor from the east to the west, but everyone seemed to be doing his best. Everyone seemed to be yapping or yipping. Everyone seemed to be beeping or bipping, but it wasn't enough. All this ruckus and roar, he had to find someone to help him make more. He raced through each building. He searched floor to floor. And just as he felt he was getting nowhere, and almost about to give up in despair, he suddenly burst through the door and that mayor discovered one shirker quite hidden away in a Fairfax apartment, apartment 12J, a very small, very small shirker named Jojo, who was standing, just standing and bouncing a yo-yo, not making a sound, not a yip, not a chirp. And the mayor rushed inside and he grabbed the young twerp and he climbed with the lad 
up the Eiffelberg Tower. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour, the time for whose who have blood that is red to come to the aid of their country, he said. We've got to make noises in greater amounts. So open your mouth, lad, for every shout counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed. When they got to the top, the lad cleared his throat and shouted out, Yop! And that yop, that one small extra yop, put it over. Finally, at last, from that speck on the clover, their voices were heard. They rang out clear and clean in the elephant smile. Do you see what I mean? They proved they are persons, no matter how small. And their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true. Yes, how true, said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm planning to do. From now on, I'm going to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Me too. From sun in the summer, from rain when it's fallish, I'm going to protect them, no matter how smallish. Had you guys heard that story before? It's kind of a good one, right? It's about sticking together, right? Having a voice, I kind of like it. So I have a couple more stories and I have some things I'm gonna see if you can guess the stories. So we're talking Dr. Seuss and here's a fun art project and it's also the title of a story. Can you see? One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Should we read that one? This might be a fun thing for you guys to do at home too. Super fun project. All right, Dr. Seuss, here we go. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Hopefully I don't get tongue tied. Okay, let's see. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. This one has a little star. This one has a little car. Say, what a lot of fish there are. Yes, some are red and some are blue, some are old and some are new, some are sad and some are glad, and some are very, very bad. Why are they sad and glad and bad? I do not know. Go ask your dad. Some are thin and some are fat. The fat one has a yellow hat. From there to here, from here to there, funny things are everywhere. Here are some who like to run. And they run for fun in the hot, hot sun. Oh me, oh my, oh me, oh my. What a lot of funny things go by. Some have two feet, some have four. Some have six feet, some have more. Where do they come from? I cannot say, but I bet they have come a long, long way. I see them come, I see them go. This some are fast and some are slow. Some are high and some are low. Not one of them is like another. Don't ask us why, go ask your mother. Say, look at his fingers. One has two, one, two, three. How many do I see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait, he has 11. 11, that is something new. I wish I had 11 too. Bump, bump, bump. Did you ever ride a wump? We have a wump with just one hump, but we know a man called Mr. Gump. Mr. Gump has a seven hump wump. So if you like to go bump, bump, you just jump on the hump of the wump of Gump. Who am I? My name is Ned. I do not like my little bed. This is no good, this is not right. My feet stick out of bed all night. And when I put them in, oh dear, my head sticks out of bed up here. Hmm, we like our bike. It's made for three. Our mic sits up in back, you see. We like our mic and this is why. Mike does all the work when the hills get high. Hello there, Ned. How do you do? Tell me, tell me what is new. How are things in your little bed? What is new? Please tell me, Ned. I do not like this bed at all. A lot of things have come to call. A cow, a dog, a cat, a mouse. Oh, what a bed. Oh, what a house. Oh dear, oh dear, I cannot hear. Will you please come over near? Will you please look at my ear? There must be something there I fear. Say, look, a bird was in your ear, but he is out 
so have no fear. Again, your ear can hear, my dear. My hat is old. My teeth are gold. I have a bird I like to hold. My shoe is off. My foot is cold. My shoe is off. My foot is cold. I have a bird I like to hold. My hat is old. My teeth are gold. And now my story is all told. We took a look. We saw a nook on his head. He had a hook on his hook. He had a book and on his book was how to cook. We saw him sit and try to cook. He took a look at the book on the hook, but nook can't read. So a nook can't cook. So what good to a nook is a hook cookbook? The moon was out and we saw some sheep. We saw some sheep take a walk in their sleep. By the light of the moon, by the light of the star, they walked all night from near to far. I would never walk. I would take a car. I do not like this one so well. All he does is yell, yell, yell. I will not have this one about. When he comes in, I put him out. This one is quiet as a mouse. I like to have him in the house. At our house, we open cans. We have to open many cans, and that is why we have a Zans. A Zans for cans is very good. Have you a Zans for cans? You should. I like to box. Oh, how I like to box. So every day, I box a gox. In yellow socks, I box a gox. In yellow sock, yellow gox, box socks. I get tongue tied. It is fun to sing if you sing with a ying. My ying can sing like anything. I sing high and my ying sings low and we are not too bad, you know. This one I think is called a ying. He likes to wink, he likes to drink. He likes to drink and drink and drink. The thing he likes to drink is ink. The ink he likes to drink is pink. He likes to wink and drink pink ink. So if you have a lot of ink, then you should get a yink, I think. Hop, hop, hop. I'm a yap. All I like to do is hop. From finger top to finger top, I hop from left to right and then hop, hop, I hop right back again. I like to hop all day and night from right to left to left to right. Why do I like to hop, hop, hop? I do not know, go ask your pop. Brush, 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 comb, 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 comb. Blue hair is fun to brush and comb. All girls who like to brush and comb should have a pet like this at home. Who is this pet? Say, he's all wet. You never yet met a pet, I bet, as wet as they let this wet pet get. Did you ever fly a kite in bed? Did you ever walk with 10 cats on your head? Did you ever milk this kind of cow? Well, we can do it, we know how. If you never did, you should. These things are fun and fun is good. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Hello? I called you up to say hello. I said hello. Can you hear me, Joe? Oh, no? I cannot hear your call. I cannot hear your call at all. This is not good, and I know why. A mouse has cut the wire. Goodbye. From near to far, from here to there, funny things are everywhere. These yellow pets are called the Zeds. They have one hair upon their heads. Their hair grows fast, so fast, they say, they need a haircut every day. Who am I? My name is Ish. On my hand, I have a dish. I have this dish to help me wish. When I wish to make a wish, I wave my hand with a big swish wish, and I say I wish for fish, and I get fish right on my dish. So if you wish to wish a wish, you may swish for fish with my Ish wish dish. At our house, we play out back. We play a game called the called Ring the Gack. When you play this game, excuse me, would you like to play this game? Come down. We have the only gack in town. Look what we found in the park, in the dark. We will take it home. We will call him Clark. He will live at our house. He will grow and grow. Will our mother like this? We don't know. And now, good night. It's time to sleep. So we will sleep with our pet Zeep. Today is gone, today was fun, tomorrow is another one. Every day from here to there, funny things are everywhere. That was a tongue-twisting story, but also fun to read. Dr. Seuss has a lot of those types of books. There's another one I'm thinking of. I don't think I'll read it today because I have a different one I want to read. But I wonder if you can guess the name of it. Do you see this? Isn't he so cute? I think you guys could make one of these too. So this is a paper plate. 
And then we drew a hat. And we put some eyes and some whiskers and a bow tie. Do you know who this cat is? It is Dr. Seuss's cat in the hat. You should make one of these. This is super fun. I am going to read another story today. Not the cat in the hat, even though it's a really fun one. I'm going to read one about birthdays because it's Dr. Seuss's birthday this week. And he has a story called Happy Birthday to You. So I thought maybe that would be a fun one to read. Hmm. Can you see that? Let's see if I can get it just right. I wish we could do what they do in Ketru. They sure know how to say happy birthday to you. In Ketru, every year on the day you were born, they start the day right in the bright early morn. When the birthday honk honker hikes high up Mount Zorn and lets loose a big blast on the big birthday horn. And the voice of the horn calls out loud as it plays, wake up, for today is your day of all days. Then the moment the horn's happy honk honk is heard comes a fluttering flap and then comes the bird, the great birthday bird. And so far as I know, Katru is the only place that birthday birds grow. The bird has a brain. He's most beautifully brained with the brainiest bird brain that's ever been trained. He was trained by the most splendid club in this nation, the Katru Happy Birthday Association. <laughs> Association is the way that says. And whether your name is Pete, Polly, or Paul, when your birthday comes around, he is in charge of it all. Whether your name is Nate, Nellie, or Ned, he knows your address and he heads for your bed. You hear a soft swoosh in the brightening sky. You are not all awake, but you open one eye, then over the housetops and trees of Katru, you see that bird coming to you, just to you. That bird pops right in. You are up to your feet. You jump to the window. You meet and you greet with a secret Katru birthday high sign and shake that only good people with birthdays may make. You do it just so, with each finger and toe. Then the bird says, come on, brush your teeth, and let's go. It's your day of all days. It's the best of the best, so don't waste a minute. Hop to it. Get dressed. And five minutes later, you're having a snack. On your way out of town, on a smorgasbord's back. Today, laughs the bird, eat whatever you want. Today, no one tells you you can't or you shan't. And today, you don't have to be tidy or neat. If you wish, you may eat with both hands and both feet. So get in there and munch. Have a big munch or roo. Today is your birthday. Today, you're you. If we didn't have birthdays, you wouldn't be you. If you'd never been born, well then, what would you do? If you'd never been born, well then, what would you be? You might be a fish or a toad in a tree. You might be a doorknob or three baked potatoes. You might be a bag full of gr hard green tomatoes or worse than all that, why, you might be a wasn't. A wasn't has no fun at all. No, he doesn't. A wasn't just isn't. He just isn't present. But you, you are you. And now, isn't that pleasant? So, we'll go to the top of the toppest blue space, the official Katru birthday sounding off place. Come on, open your mouth, sound off at the sky, shout loud at the top of your voice, I am I, me, I am I. And I may not know why, but I know that I like it. Three cheers, I am I. And now, on this day of all days in Katru, the association 
has built just for you, a railway with very particular boats that are pulled through the air by funicular goats. These goats never slip, never trip, never bungle. They'll take us down fast to the birthday flower jungle, the best sniffing flowers that anyone grows. We have grown to be sniffed by your own private nose. Oh my, look at those flowers, guys. They smell like licorice and cheese. Ew, I don't know if I want my flowers to smell like cheese. Send 40 hubbubs up the trees to snip with the sniffers, nip with the nippers, clip and clop with the clapping clippers, nip and snip with clipping cloppers, snip and snop with snipping snoppers, all for you. The hubbubs clip. Happy birthday, Not and nip. Then, pile the wondrous smelling snack, stacks on 50 Hippoheimer's backs. Whoa. They'll take those flowers all home for you. You can keep the Hippoheimer's too. Well, this, while this is done, I've got a hunch. It's time to eat our birthday lunch. For birthday luncheons, as a rule, we serve hot dogs rolled on a spool. So stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff until you've had enough. Now, of course, we're all mustard. So one of the rules is to wash it all off in the mustard off pools, which are very fine, warm water, mountaintop tubs, which were built just for this by the mustard off clubs. Then out of the water, sing loud while you dry. Sing loud, I am lucky. Sing loud, I am I. If you've never been born, then you might be an isn't. An isn't is no fun at all. No, he isn't. He never has birthdays and that isn't pleasant. So you have to be born or you don't get a present. A present, aha. Now, what kind shall I give? Why, the kind you'll remember as long as you live. Do you guys have a favorite birthday present that you ever got? Hmm, would you like a fine pet? Well, that's just what you'll get. I'll get you the fanciest pet ever yet. As you see, we have here in the heart of our nation, the official Katru birthday pet reservation from East of the eastest to west of the westest, we've searched the whole world to bring you the bestest. They'll come in all sizes, small, medium, tall. If you wish, I'll find you the tallest of all. Oh my goodness. To find who's the tallest, we'll start with the smallest. We start with the smallest, then what do we do? We line them all up, back to back, two by two, taller and taller, and then we're through. We finally find the one who is taller than who. But you have to be smart and keep watching their feet because sometimes they stand on their tippy toes to cheat. See that one? Okay, and so from the smaller we stack them up taller and taller and taller and taller and taller and now here's the one who is taller than Aller. He's yours. He's all yours. He's the very top tallest. I know you'll enjoy him. The tallest of allest. I'll have him shipped home to you, birthday express. That costs quite a lot, but I couldn't care less. Today's your birthday, today you are you. So what if it costs me a thousand or two? Oh my. Today is your birthday, you'll get what, your wit, what you wish. You also might like a nice time-telling fish. So I'll send diver gets, and I'll send diver gets deep under the sea in their undersea kits in all the wide world, there's no better pets than the time-telling fish and the gits, gits, and gets, gets. But speaking of time, why good gracious alive, the time-telling fish says it's quarter to five. I had no idea it was getting so late. We have to get going. We have a big date. And so, as the sunset burns red in the west, comes the night of the day of the best of the best. And the night of all nights, of all nights in Katru. So according to rule, what we usually do is saddle up two hooded clopfers named Alice 
and gallop like mad to the birthday palace. Palace? Okay, that's a weird word. Your big birthday party soon starts to begin. In the finest palace. Palace. Yeah, that's what it says. You've ever been in. Now, this birthday palace is, as soon as you will see, has exactly 9,403 rooms to play games in. 12 halls for brass bands, not counting the 53 hamburger stands. And besides all of that, there are 65 rooms just for keeping the sweeping up afterwards brooms. Because after your party, as well you may guess, it will take 20 days just to sweep up the mess. Um, you can't have a party like that here, Kate. <laughs> First, we greeted, we're greeted by drummers who drum as they come, and next come the strummers who strum as they come. And the drummers who drum and the strummers who strum are followed by zummers who come as they zum. Just look at those zummers. They're sort of like plumbers. They all come humming with heads in their plumbing, and that makes the music that zummers all zumming. And all of this beautiful zumming and humming and plumbing and strumming and drumming and coming, all of it, all of it, all of it is for you. All right, that says, happy birthday you. Look, Dr. Daring Singing Herrings. Daring Singing Spelling Herrings. See what the herrings do? They sing and spell it all for you. And here comes your cake. Cooked by Snookers and Snookers, the official Katru Happy Birthday Cake Cookers. And Snookers and Snookers, I'm happy to say, are the only cake cookers who cook cakes today. Made of guaranteed certified strictly grade A peppermint cucumber sausage paste butter. Gross. And the world's finest cakes like slicers, dutter and dutter and dutter and dutter with hatchets a flutter high up on the poop deck stand ready to cut her. I don't know about you, but I don't want a piece of that cake. Today, you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. Shout it loud. I am lucky to be what I am. Thank goodness I'm not just a clam or a ham or a dusty old jar of sour gooseberry jam. I am what I am. That's a great thing to be. If I say so myself, happy birthday to me. Now, by horseback and birdback and hipper back too, come your friends, all your friends from all over Katru, and the birthday palalase heats up with hot friends, and your party goes on and on and on till it ends. When it ends, you're much happier, richer, and fatter, and the bird flies you home on a very soft platter. So that's what the birthday bird does in Katru. And I wish I could do all these great things for you. That's pretty awesome. So it's Dr. Seuss's birthday week. I think that that means we should all be reading and enjoying great stories. Thanks for joining me today. I hope to see you next week and I hope you get outside and play. There's a lot of snow out there to enjoy. Bye for now, see you next week.